Hey, what's up guys, I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be talking about a $2,000 headphone system build. Now this entire build is going to be revolving around sound staging and having a pretty good sound staging experience, as well as fixing a couple issues with the headphone that we're gonna be featuring today, the HD800S. Now what allows this to happen is a combination of the software within this amp and DAC and the physical attributes of this headphone. Let's go ahead and talk about this entire build, where you might be able to save some costs, what alternative options you might be able to have, and where I might recommend spending a little bit more or spending a little bit less money. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first off, we have the hardware. You have the HD800S, one of the best sound staging headphones that are on the market, if not perhaps the best, though there are some caveats. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is sitting on top of a Grove made wooden uh, and well, actually wood, metal and leather, very solid headphone stand. This stand is very well made. I'll put a link in the description down below. Couple quick notes here. Grove made did send this out, but what they're actually doing is a giveaway of an AirPod Max. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to enter to win that. It doesn't cost anything. It's just a giveaway. If you did want to pick up an AirPod Max, here is your chance. We have the stock HD 800S 4.4 millimeter balance cable. Then we have an adapter for 4.4 millimeter to the four pin XLR. So here's sort of a weird thing. The 800S comes with two cables. It comes with the Pentacon or the 4.4 millimeter balance cable. And then it also comes with a standard quarter inch cable. You could use the quarter inch here if you didn't want to buy an adapter. You won't be getting as much power out of this DAC amp, but the power out of that quarter inch I think is more than enough and will still work with everything we plan on doing. Uh, with the 800S. I like a little bit more headroom than that though, so I think the adapter is probably worth it for me. And I can also use it with a lot of the other balance amps that I have here. So an adapter makes sense, though it's totally optional for this build. Okay, and then we have basically what unlocks this entire system, which is the THX DAC amp from Monoprice. What makes this thing special is baseline measurements for both a DAC and an amp are incredible. This thing is a really, really good value, even though it's a little bit higher up in cost. Two is the custom EQ options that you can actually have inbuilt in the system, no need for separate EQ. And we're gonna be using that to fix some of the issues with the HD100S. And three is sort of the cheat. It's kind of the cheat code to this whole system and why it probably has the best sound stage that you can get from any headphone in terms of total width. And that's the Dirac sense around that's in here. Now a quick caveat and I'll talk more in detail about this. I don't always recommend using the Dirac. I don't even recommend using it most of the time, but some of the time it can actually benefit this headphone quite a lot, but we'll talk more about that in depth when we get there. Okay, so prices for everything. Uh, right now you can actually find these HD800Ss brand new, sold from Sennheiser for basically the cheapest that I think I've ever seen them at. So as of right now, this costs about $1,350. Normally what they've been at for as long as I've been doing reviews, is $1,600. This headphone stand is about 140. It is quite a lot for a headphone stand, but the quality of the stand is actually really, really nice. Um, this thing feels dense, and I think it looks kind of cool. It's got a very unique styling to it. I think it looks pretty sleek. The cables come with the HD800S. This amp and DAC are about $500. So altogether, this entire system, except for the adapter, costs just about $2,000, not including tax. If you want to include the adapter, I'm not sure exactly what the prices for that are. I'm assuming probably in the realm of $20 to $30, but it could vary a little bit depending on what options you choose. That's a periapt adapter, by the way. Okay, so let's talk about first the, the pairing and why I think this amp with this headphone is so good. One, we already talked about power, this being more than enough to drive a dynamic headphone like the 800S. But two, the 800S has known resonance issues or kind of uh, 
sibilance issues in the frequency response. So they have a little bit of a sharpness in the upper S region. So all these S's that I'm saying right now are probably gonna come across pretty harsh on a stock 800S. They're also what some people consider to be a little bit light on the bass response. This DAC can fix both of those issues. You can have up to two shelf EQs, which are gonna provide a very broad kind of frequency dip or gain. And uh, you can go up in octaves. It's it's relatively in-depth, not as much as something like an RMEI, but it's still pretty good. Um, and then you can have up to four custom EQs all implemented at the same time at various specific frequencies. Uh, so if you wanna do a dip in 7,000 Hertz, which is what I have here, it's sort of on a bell curve, that's what you can do with this. So you can actually exonerate a lot of that peak. And then on the bass response, you can bring up the bass and the lower frequencies to be a little bit more fulfilled and a little bit harder hitting. Now you can kind of tailor this headphone with this DAC to be kind of a lot of different things. You can make it super bright, super analytical. You can make it super dark, overly bassy. You can make it even super mid-range focus, which is something that the 800 out of its, uh, you know, out of its box is not going to do. Now here's the caveat with this and why this amp is so impressive. You can do all of this even a little bit better in terms of the EQ stuff, with just getting an EQ, like Equalizer APO, for example. But the kicker here is that this DAC and amp alone, without any of the EQ options, is still a pretty good amp and DAC. It's actually really good, especially for an all-in-one unit. In fact, the only things that I think are missing with this is remote support and Bluetooth. Outside of that, this thing is killer for the price. So what I recommend with this is throwing a custom EQ, kind of play around with the frequencies that you wanna dip down and bring up. And like I said, you can increase and decrease uh, I think up to 6 dB for a lot of the custom EQs. Maybe it's 10, somewhere around there. But you can increase and decrease the EQ of specific frequencies quite a bit. Now, on this headphone, this headphone is a great headphone for really specific things, but out of the box, it has some issues. So the pairing between the two, because of the flexibility that this allows the headphone to sound like, can really take all of the advantages of the 800S and just add to those advantages and it takes away from some of the disadvantages, which makes the 800S with this thing actually really awesome. Okay, now let's talk about the Dirac or Dirac sense around that is in this as an option. It's not automatic, it's something that you can actually toggle on and off. Now what Dirac does is it's sort of a, I don't know if you would call it an algorithm necessarily, but it takes the sound coming in, the two channel audio coming in, and it kind of makes it sound a little bit more open and a little bit more surrounding and around you than maybe two channels normally would in a pair of headphones. Now, as far as software goes, this is actually pretty locked down. You actually have to buy a unit with the Dirac software built into it. You can't actually get the software separately. Even if you try and purchase it, it's unfortunately not something that's available. So here's the thing with the Dirac and something that uh, I wanna make very clear here. This is a gain loss scenario. This is something that gains a little bit sometimes and loses a little bit most times. So what it's going to gain sometimes with the right type of music is wider soundstage. Even for headphones that don't soundstage very wide, like a 6XX for example, this sense around with the right music can actually sound extremely wide without taking away from the really awesome nature of the 6XX sound signature. So in a weird way, you get to keep what is familiar with the headphone, but add some unique sound staging aspects to this. The flip side of this is that you lose a little bit in resolution. Sometimes you lose a little bit of bass, but it kind of depends on which frequencies you're talking about. And you kind of lose a little bit of presence to the headphone, I would say. You sacrifice a little bit in terms of dynamics for a wider overall sound. Now, while this works really well with the HD 800 is because you have the EQ settings and you can sort of turn on the sense around and add an EQ that sort of complements the sense around on this particular headphone really, really well. Now, if this was an always on feature, I would pretty much never recommend it. I would say this is really good like 30% of the time that it's on. I would say that the other 70% of the time, the upsides of having it off probably outweigh the upsides of having it on because it doesn't always actually make better sound stage. Sometimes it just adds a little bit of funky directionality. It really just depends on how the music was mixed. A lot of things that have a very natural open sound stage to them are usually benefited from this. But a lot of things that are kind of studio based that don't really have a lot of real sound stage in like room information in the music, this isn't really gonna complement very well. So it really just depends. Now, 
the benefit is that you can turn it on and off. Okay, so what does all this allow this headphone to do? Well, on the right music, it allows this headphone to simply be the widest sound staging headphone that I've ever heard, simply put. Um, there are other factors that I don't seem to be able to squeak out of the HD 800 that might be a little bit better. Let's take this Aria for example, which is another option for this build actually, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. This Aria has something that the HD 800 does not have, which is scale. It's got size to the sound. Sounds seem big, they seem large. If you're listening to an orchestra, it seems kind of much grander in scale than the 800S but the 800 is wider, it's further out to the sides. Uh, both of these have very impressive imaging, but one of the very big strengths of the 800 is imaging and sound staging specificity. And so even with a little bit of loss in resolution of the Dirac, you can actually keep something that basically has the edge on almost everything else already. Now there's a number of reasons why this headphone sound stage is really, really wide. A lot of them actually. Frequency response is one of them. Also the tuning being a diffuse field headphone, there's a lot of things. One of them though is the physical distance from the driver to your ear. This is a headphone that has its driver quite a bit further than most headphones actually do from your actual ear. Now what this sort of in a roundabout way benefits this headphone with, even if you nullify some of the high end with this DAC amp, uh, the physical attributes of the driver are still there to benefit the soundstage. So with this amp in front of it, you can actually have a lot of the best things about this headphone and none of the worst things. So it's a pretty good pairing. Where can you save money? Where can you do a little bit better? What other things can you get for this same cost? Uh, if you didn't want to mess around with the EQ settings, you could get something like a Magnus and a Modius for $400 instead of the $500. It's not gonna come in an all-in-one, but you may actually prefer the look of the stack. Um, and I think that the Magnus also provides a little bit more power than this thing does. You could also go to different headphones. So these Arias are gonna range about 1600, what the 800Ss are normally at, though the 800Ss right now are a couple hundred bucks cheaper than this. In my opinion, I think the Arias sound fantastic, though they do have some technical issues. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge to uh, this can fix some of those issues and, and provide a, a pretty pleasing experience when uh, you add some EQ to this. The Aria's build is not nearly as well defined as the 800S, um, and the sound staging width, again, is not as good, though I think the scale is much better on the Aria. The Bayer Dynamic T1 Generation 2, I actually consider to be very, very close in terms of sound signature to the 800S. And in my opinion, it actually sounds like a miniaturized 800S. You take the sound staging and you just kind of shrink it a little bit, and I th even think the tonality, the bass response, just that headphone sound in general uh, is really close to the 800S. The sibilance region is a little bit different though. The 800S sibilance has a little bit of an S sound and the T1 has a little bit of a zing sound. So you will have to adjust what frequencies you're reducing between the two headphones. But the T0 comes at about half the cost of what the 800S costs right now. So that could be a very appealing option. You could pick up a T0 and get something close to this, not quite as good, but close. And you could pick up something like an Alex. So then you have two very, very good headphones for the same price of one very, very good headphone. So there's a lot of different ways you can spend this. And when you're working with a $2,000 budget, your options are a ton. Okay, now normally I like to talk about where you could save money um, or alternative options within the, the budget of the build. Uh, but now I want to talk about some additional options that you might want to consider, uh, but they do cost a little bit extra on top of the build cost. Something like this dark voice. And here's why. This headphone sounds terrible on this dark voice with the stock tubes. I don't really like it at all. I do like the 800S on tubes, but I don't like it on these tubes. But this particular DAC amp, which does have RCA outs, which can go to the dark voice, the EQ adjustments and the Dirac software can work off of those RCAs. So you can actually customize the sound before they even hit the tubes. So you can actually reduce some of the highs, which is usually what I deal with is like a kind of boost in the trouble response of the 800, but a, a vast reduction in clarity there. So it comes across kind of shimmery and shiny, but not in a good way, almost like a 
kind of a too bright sort of way. But I do like what it does to the bass response in the mid-range. So I get all the benefits of the low end and the mid-range warmth from the dark voice, but if I can quell those highs, I just have a wonderful tube experience on my hands because I was able to manipulate it with the THX DAC amp. So overall, I find this to be a pretty well-rounded setup. I think the DAC and amp doesn't cost too much for the headphones and is, is kind of a really nicely balanced system. Um, I also think that in this particular case, this amp and this headphone pair really well because of what they can do for each other and how they kind of benefit each other. In even though the stock baseline tuning of the 800S is not what I consider perfect, it's such a good baseline and platform for you to mess around with the sound quality of this headphone. You can really get a lot of different experiences off of this one headphone because of this amplifier and because this makes such a good kind of launching point for those effects. All right, guys, I am working on a budget setup. I swear it is coming. I'm having some trouble with getting the products here from shipping. They're all delayed because apparently everybody everywhere is delayed right now with shipping companies. So uh, I'm working on it, uh, but, uh, I'll get there. Trust me. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap this episode of the build series up. Uh, this is going to be the $2,000 budget build featuring the 800S, the Grove Made, very nice headphone stand, and the THX stack amp. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.